In this video, I'm going to break down seven different side hustle ideas that you can start this year to the point where you're hopefully making an extra thousand dollars a month. And for each of them, we're going to talk about how easy it is to get started. Secondly, how easy it is to make your first hundred dollars from it. And thirdly, how much time and effort it takes to keep things going once you've gotten started. And then afterwards, I'm going to talk about what I would personally be doing if I was, say, in my early 20s and trying to make some extra money and how I'd be applying these principles to my own life. Part one, the philosophy of side hustles. Okay, so let's start by zooming out a little bit and thinking critically about what we're actually trying to do here. So what is a side hustle? What is the point of doing the side hustle thing? Well, firstly, very few people would say no to an extra thousand dollars a month coming in. Even an extra few hundred dollars a month coming in would be really helpful for a lot of people. Having more money is generally a good thing because it unlocks autonomy, it unlocks freedom, it lets you buy more things if you're interested in that, it lets you unlock more experiences, and it lets you basically have a little bit more control over your own life. So how do you actually make this extra money that you want coming in? Well, one way is to try and get a raise at your day job, but we're not gonna talk about that because this video is about side hustles. The other way is of doing a kind of old school side hustle, which is actually just called a second job. Like for example, let's say I wanted to make an extra few hundred quid a month. I could get a job at the local kebab shop down the road. And that's all well and good because I could be making, I don't know, 10 pound, 12 pounds an hour or something like that working at this said kebab shop. But there's a few issues with me trying to use that as my side hustle or second job. Firstly, there is a cap to how much money I could be getting paid working at the local kebab shop. Secondly, working at the local kebab shop is probably not very fun. I'm a big fan of kebabs, I love it. But even then it would probably become kind of boring after a while. And thirdly, and most importantly, it would tie me into more shift work. Let's say I've got a day job and then I'm doing the kebab shifts in the evening. I have to show up at a particular time. I don't have autonomy over my time and I don't have the flexibility in being able to work when I want. And so these factors mean that working at the local kebab shop, I would call less of a side hustle. Well, you can use that terminology if you want. I would call it more like a second job. So when we say side hustles, what do we generally mean by that? A decent side hustle should take three boxes. Firstly, it should, you, it should allow you to make more money than you would be working at a local service job. Secondly, it should be something that you actually enjoy doing where ideally it wouldn't necessarily feel like work. It wouldn't feel as if you have a second job that you're toiling away at just to make a little bit of extra cash. It would be something that actually fulfills you creatively. And thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, it would be flexible. You wouldn't be tied into a certain shift pattern. You'd be able to work broadly where you want and when you want. Now, in this video, we're gonna break down seven different things that you could do that tick all three of these boxes. But there's one final thing that we need to understand before we go forward, and that is the law of making money. And the law of making money basically says that money is an exchange of value. If you wanna make money, you need to provide value to people who are willing to pay you for said value. Now, this is a mistake that I see a lot of people making, all the emails I get from people asking, you know, how do, how do I make money on the internet, all this kind of stuff. But like, in order for you to make money, someone needs to, someone needs to give you that money. You can't just make money. Money just does not grow in trees. It doesn't just appear magically in your account. Someone has to actually want to pay you in order for you to get that money into your account. Like for example, when you buy a $3 coffee from Starbucks, you're paying Starbucks $3 or whatever it is, and then you're getting a coffee in return because you perceive that that value, the coffee that you're getting, is worth the $3. The $3 is coming out of your personal account and going to Starbucks. Similarly, when you are making money on the internet, it's easy to think of the internet as like magical internet money. Oh, if I make a YouTube video, I just make money for free. But like that money is coming from someone. In the case of YouTube, it's coming from advertisers. And the people that would say that making money is fairly easy are the ones who understand that it's an exchange of value. And there's a fairly simple formula for this. And if you can understand the formula, then you probably, hopefully, shouldn't really struggle with making money. And that formula is, firstly, you just need to learn a skill or get good at a skill that people are willing to pay for. And then secondly, you just need to find people who are willing to pay for that skill. And so if you can just do those things, learn a skill and then find people who are willing to pay you for the skill, then you won't really have a problem with making money. And so hopefully you're gonna see as we go through the rest of this video that the seven different ideas we're talking about here are all about building a valuable skill and then finding people to pay you for set skill. So let's get started. Side hustle idea number one, become a writer for businesses. Very, very broadly, there are two types of businesses. There's B2C and there's B2B. So B2C is business to consumer and B2B is business to business. Basically everything you're familiar with is gonna be B2C, business to consumer. So for example, YouTube is B2C. Like most, mostly it's consumers who are watching YouTube. But actually the way YouTube makes money is B2B. They are selling a service to advertisers. They're selling to other businesses. And it's worth understanding this distinction because by far the easiest way to level up your ability to make money is to start thinking B2B rather than B2C. It's to start thinking, what are the services that I can offer to businesses rather than how can I make money from my friends and colleagues? Because your friends and colleagues probably don't have money to spend. It's like, if you start imagining like, oh, what value can I add to my my friend? It's like, I could become a cleaner for them, maybe that's B2C. But if you start thinking, what value can I add to local businesses or businesses on the internet? Now it just massively increases the scope of things that you can do to make money on the internet. And the first major category of services that you can offer to businesses is writing. Writing is one of the top things that basically every business in the world is looking for. It could be a local business like your local accountant or your local dry cleaner. It could be an internet business like software and 
all this kind of stuff. It could be creators like me and other YouTubers. It could be authors, it could be podcasters. Like almost every business that you'll ever come across will have a need to hire writers to do some kind of writing. Now, one of the main ones here is content writing. So for example, businesses will have a blog often. And on that blog, they will post articles about their particular industry. And they're hoping that by posting enough articles on their website, they'll get decent search engine optimization, SEO, and then more people are gonna go on their blog and then they'll stumble across the business and then that will increase the sales or the leads for the business. And this is a great niche to get yourself into because it's very valuable for a business to have someone competent being able to write articles for them. B, they absolutely recognize the value of this and they will pay for the service. And C, it means you can just write. You can write about topics or businesses or fields that you're genuinely interested in. And generally when you're doing something that you have an inherent interest in, that you actually enjoy writing about, it's gonna become way easier and it's gonna feel a lot less like work. The other major category of people who need writers is any kind of creator. We hire a bunch of people to do research and writing for our videos or for social media or for our website or for our courses and tons and tons of stuff. Every other creator that I know who's making money, who's treating their creator thing like a business, also has a massive requirement for writers. And so if you want, you can make money by working with your favorite creators and helping them write content. I know people who charge $1,000 for a single script for a YouTube video. So if you can find a creator that needs that kind of service, you can make some pretty good money doing that thing. There's another mistake that people make here and they think, okay, cool, I'm gonna be a writer. Therefore, let me advertise my services on a freelance website like Fiverr or Upwork or People Power or something like that. And I would normally say that that's a pretty bad idea because if you're on these freelance websites where there are 50,000 other people offering the same service, you're already kind of on the back foot because how is someone gonna find you out of these other 50,000 people? Instead, what I'd recommend is what Jack Butcher calls the permissionless apprentice model. So basically you do work for people for free without them asking you to do it. And you just then email them and show them the work that you've done. And so for example, if I was thinking, how do I make money as a writer? I would basically go to my favorite YouTubers, the ones whose content I watch anyway, and that certainly doesn't feel like work. And I would just write a brand new video for them completely for free. That would be a good way for me to A, improve my own skills, and B, boost up my own portfolio. And C, once I've written a script for them in a Google Doc or a Notion page or whatever, I would send it to them with an accompanying video that says, hey, I've written this for you completely for free. If you like it, feel free to use it. And if you want more things like this, then, you know, let's Let's, let's chat and you know we can talk about working together for the long term. And I would do this for a handful of my favorite YouTubers and I can basically guarantee that at least one of them are gonna reply, assuming my script is good, with, oh my God, this is incredible. You've really nailed the script in exactly what my style would be and therefore I want to hire you. All right, so something like this, how easy is it to start? And actually, especially these days with the advent of AI, artificial intelligence enhanced writing tools, it's actually becoming way easier to be a writer than it used to be when you had to type all the words out yourself. So often being a decent writer these days is just about being able to use the appropriate AI tools to create your first draft, and then being able to edit that first draft to see what sounds good and what's in the style of the people that you're trying to work for. How easy is it to make your first hundred dollars? Again, I would say it's a little bit harder than just getting started because you have to now find people to pay you. But if you're using this permissionless apprentice model, if you're not trying to stand in the queue of 50,000 people on Fiverr trying to get hired, but you're, but you're instead actively reaching out and working for free for people that you actually want to work with, I would say, probably within a few weeks, you probably land your first client and then that'll probably pay more than $100 and now you've made your first $100. And then how much time and effort is it to keep going? Well, the issue with writing is that you are kind of trading your time for money because you do have to do the work of actually writing to, being, to, to then get paid for it. But actually these days, if you use AI tools appropriately, then you can probably massively leverage your own ability to write stuff. And then also further down the line, once you've had experience in writing, you can then start creating your own assets. You can make your own eBooks or your own courses, your own products. And now that is a thing that then decorrelates writing from the amount of time you're spending on it. And it then becomes a way of leveling up this particular side hustle and maybe making a more of a passive income stream out of this writing stuff. Side hustle idea number two, becoming a sales copywriter. Basically, anytime someone wants to sell something, they will have a page that gives you the information about their product. For example, if you look on Amazon, any product will have some copy, sales copy, some writing that's trying to sell you the product. If you look at any online courses or any products on the internet, like basically everything will have some level of sales copy associated with it. And so if you're looking to make some extra money through a side hustle and you're interested in, for example, writing and sales and marketing and psychology and persuasion and this kind of stuff, you can actually fairly easily and fairly quickly become more of an expert in the field of sales and marketing. You could read a few books like Russell Brunson's Expert Secrets Trilogy. You could read uh, Alex Hormozzi's $100 million offers. You could read a book by, I think, Jim Stevens called Copywriting Secrets. And with a handful of books, you would become way more knowledgeable about sales and marketing generally and about copywriting in particular that you probably know way more than any business that's trying to hire you for the service. And the nice thing about sales copywriting is that generally the return on investment for a business is fairly obvious. Like if someone emailed me and they did the permissionless apprentice model and they saw that my part-time YouTuber academy has a sales page and because of their knowledge of sales and marketing and copywriting, they would know that my sales page is under optimized. If they were to just send me a Google doc being like, hey, 
I'm a sales copywriter. I've rewritten the first half of your landing page for you. Feel free to use it, but I'd love to work with you. I would immediately say, yes, absolutely. I'm going to hire this person because for me, if I can improve the conversion rate on my sales page by even 1%, that directly translates to bottom line profits. And therefore it's a lot easier for me to justify the expense of hiring a sales copywriter for that thing. And the thing with all of these things is that once you've got one paying client, it's be it becomes a lot easier to land other paying clients because word of mouth recommendations in the world of business are just huge. And generally, if we work with a, with a freelancer or someone who's really good, then I will know 10 to 20 to 30 other people who need that service. And I'd be recommending that freelancer to those other people as well. Because generally business owners hang out with other business owners, big YouTubers hang out with other big YouTubers. And generally the problems that one of those has is the same as the problem that all their friends have. So really all you have to do is get your foot in the door, get your first paying client, get a testimonial from them. And then word of mouth recommendations mean that you probably won't struggle to find clients in the future. Again, assuming you're good. All of this, has to be on the presupposition that money is an exchange of value and you have to actually be good at the thing. So how easy is sales copywriting to start? Well, it's not that easy. You kind of have to be good at the skill, which means you do have to do a little bit of reading, but hey, in about a month, you can read all these five books that I've mentioned. They'll be linked down in the video description. And then now all you have to do is do a little bit of practice and you can do that practice permissionlessly. Like you don't have to wait for permission for someone to be like, hey, yes, I want you to redesign my landing page. You could just do it and you could see if you enjoy it and your skills will just naturally improve over time. Secondly, how easy is it to make your first hundred dollars? Honestly, pretty easy. Sales copywriting is such a standard. It's, it's just so easy to reach out to a business and say, hey, I've improved the copy on your landing page. Do you want to hire me to improve the, the copy on the rest of your website? And they'll probably be like, hell yeah. And now you've landed your first client. And then thirdly, how time intensive is it to do? Well, actually, I think it's less time intensive than content writing, because to be honest, once you get good at sales copywriting, you find that the formula is kind of the same for any sort of business. You describe the problem, you agitate the problem, you provide a solution. Like there's a, a formula that you can read in, for example, Copywriting Secrets, the book. And if you follow that formula, you can often copy and paste things between different clients and you just become better at the skill over time. So, you know, your 10th and 20th client will take a lot less time than your first or second client. So broadly, I would say it's not too bad in terms of ongoing time and effort. Side hustle idea number three, become a thumbnail designer. So we're now talking about design as a service. We've talked about writing as a service. Now it's design as a service. And one very easy design as a service that every single YouTuber needs is a thumbnail designer. As YouTubers, we know how important thumbnails are. And so if you can actually get good at the skill of making thumbnails, which is again, not too hard. You just follow some tutorials on the internet about how to use Photoshop. And over time, you'll develop an eye for what decent thumbnails look like. Then again, you can follow the permissionless apprentice model and then you can email them and say, hey, I really enjoy your work. I've been watching your channel for a very long time. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a thumbnail designer. So I thought I'd redesign some of your thumbnails for you. Feel free to use them if you'd like. And if you'd like to hire me, if you like what I've done and you'd like to hire me, then do please get back to me and we can talk. I have actually mentioned this point in a couple of videos in the past and I have had maybe five people out of the 3 million people or 15 million people that have watched these videos, I've had about five people email me with being like, hey, I would love to be your thumbnail designer. Here are, here are a few thumbnails. Unfortunately, all five of those have just, like the thumbnails have not been very good and we've A-B tested them uh, and they just haven't performed as well as thumbnails that I could make myself. But that's like five people out of several million people who've watched the videos. And I'm literally saying, anyone can email me and redesign my thumbnails and I will literally hire you if your thumbnails are good. So only five people have done it and none of them have been good. So again, this is a thing of like exchange of exchange of value. You have to actually be good at the thing that you're trying to do. But the way you get better at the thing you're trying to do is by just doing lots of it, doing it permissionlessly. And then over time you can iterate and get better at this graphic design stuff. So how easy is it to get started with this? Well, I'd say it's kind of hard because you have to learn graphic design and you have to have an eye for kind of aesthetics and taste and just be familiar with YouTube. But if you're the sort of person who watches a lot of YouTube videos, which I hope you are, if, you're, if you've gotten to this point in this video, then maybe you'll just have more of a, an inbuilt appreciation of thumbnail aesthetics than other people do. Secondly, how easy is it to make your first hundred dollars? Well, honestly, if it were me, I would pay 200 to 250 pounds GBP for a decent thumbnail for one of my, for one of my videos. I know someone who pays a thousand dollars for a thumbnail for one of his videos. You know, the lowest I've seen people pay for thumbnails is like 30, 40, 50 pounds, which is again, quite a lot considering that it sometimes only takes maybe 20 minutes or half an hour of work to create a thumbnail. And especially if you're from a country where the kind of purchase price parity is very different to the GBP, then that's a lot of money that you can make for a very small amount of work. Again, provided you're actually good at the thing. And then thirdly, how much time and effort does this take to keep going? I would say actually a moderate amount. You do have to make the thumbnail specific for every video, but over time, as you work with specific clients, you will, you kind of get an idea of their style. Like the thumbnail designer who works with me now, it takes, it, it doesn't take very long for him to make the thumbnails for the videos because we ha kind of have a house style. It's usually a smiling photo of me. And then there's usually some icons and maybe some text. 
And that actually maybe takes like 10, 20 minutes to put together. Whereas initially it would have taken maybe several hours if you were trying to design thumbnails completely from scratch for every single client. So kind of moderate amount of effort over time. Side hustle idea number four, become a website designer. Now being a website designer is actually how I got my own start when it came to making money online as a side hustle. I was 13 years old, I was in school, but in the evenings and on the weekends, I'd be doing freelance web design for random small businesses that would meet on some freelance website. And this was how I made my first kind of several hundred dollars on the internet. And again, this is thing of that there are thousands and thousands of web designers out there. It's just that A, they're either not very good or B, just bad at marketing the services to the right people in the right format. Like if you go into Fiverr, you'll see 10,000 examples of web designers, but that's again, like if you're, if you're on Fiverr trying to sell your services, you're probably doing it wrong. And instead, if you follow the permissionless apprentice model and interact with people on Twitter and on LinkedIn and these platforms where people who have money are congregating and are willing to pay money for services, you'll generally have a much better time of trying to land work. Now, one of the guys that we work with for our website is called Henry. And in the pandemic, within about six months, he taught himself how to design websites. And he built his own personal website that looked absolutely amazing. It looked like the like one of the sales pages for an Apple product. And so he reached out to us and said that, hey, he likes, he likes the stuff. He would like to do some web design for us. And I looked at his website and I was immediately blown away. I was like, oh my God, this guy clearly knows what he's doing. Of course, I wanna hire him. Because again, every business, every creator who has a website, every business under the sun will always be thinking about how do I improve my website because they know that their website is really important for their business branding and for landing sales for their products. And so we hired Henry and now we've paid him several, I think over 10K plus over the last like year to help redesign some of our websites. Like he previously had a job, he didn't enjoy the job very much and he decided, you know what? I'm interested in design. I like the idea of making websites. I'm just gonna teach myself. And through just watching YouTube videos and taking a couple of courses online, he taught himself web design to the point that he can now charge $10,000 for every website he makes for a client. If you don't know how to make a website, I have a video about it linked over here somewhere. So how easy is this to start? I would say it's pretty easy to start because it's not that hard learning how to design a website. All you have to do is decide, is this the thing you wanna do? And then watch a few YouTube tutorials and then practice and then build up your portfolio over time. How easy is it to make your first $100? Again, not overly hard. Again, if you follow the permissionless apprentice model, if you're not trying to queue up with 50,000 other people on Fiverr and, are, and you're instead actively reaching out to companies or creators or businesses that you like, and maybe doing a little bit of a free design for their homepage initially and then saying, hey, this is what your website could look like. I'm a web designer, I'd love to work with you. You know, let's hop on a call and talk about it. It shouldn't be too hard to land your first client. And then thirdly, how much time and effort does this take to maintain over time? Again, it takes a lot of time and effort initially as you start doing the thing. But then, you know, there are plenty of people I know who just do freelance web design by designing sites on WordPress. And once you've made one or two sites, you can often copy and paste the settings and the appearance and the theme on any other site that you use and just tweak a few little bits of it. Side hustle idea number five, become a short form video editor. We've talked about writing, we've talked about design. The other major thing that basically every business under the sun is now looking at is video and in particular short form video. With the whole TikTok thing, with the whole Instagram Reels thing, with the whole YouTube Shorts thing, basically every business that I know are trying to get into video production and video making because they know that that's a way for them to generate more organic traffic for their business. Now I wanna show an example here of a Twitter DM that this guy Juan Gomez sent to my friend Dicky Bush who runs a ship 30 for 30. This guy says, I spent about 20 minutes crafting a DM. I wanted to demonstrate competence and relatability. I wanted to make sure I took on all the risk, not Dickie. And here's the DM I sent. Hey Dickie, I saw your YouTube thread and was super encouraged by your approach. Love the fact that you're building in public. I've been receiving tremendous value from your content and would want to return the favor in some way. If you're ever in need of a video editor, shoot me a message. I've worked as a video videographer editor for two years and I have over 200 videos of experience. I really connect with the topics you talk about and would love to help you grow your channel. Offer, I edit your next three videos for free and you decide if you want to work with me or not. Let me know if this is something you'd find interesting. Cheers. Now this guy from sending this DM and from like taking on all the risk himself and offering to do these next three videos completely for free, not quite following the permissionless apprentice model in that he didn't do the work up front. He asked Dickie if he wanted the work done because he would need to send him the raw files to, to edit. He ended up landing a job with this very high paying client whose work he enjoyed where doing the video editing for Dickie Bush doesn't actually feel like work to Juan. And I think a DM like this is something that so many people could learn from. Again, I get a handful of emails every single day from people pitching me on services. None of them are like demonstrate the competence and the relatability and the reliability of a message like the one that Juan sent to Dickie. And I think that's a shame because clearly there are all these people out there that wanna make money, that they wanna do creative stuff that gives them flexibility and, and autonomy, but they don't realize like how to sell the service. It's like, you could be really good at video editing, but if you suck at being able to communicate that value proposition to someone else who's willing to pay you for that service, then you're never gonna land the work in the first place. So how easy is this to start? Well, you actually have to learn video editing. It's not that hard. You can take my own Skillshare class on how to edit videos. It's free, 
Link down below if you want to check it out. And in a weekend, you can learn how to edit videos to a reasonable standard. Secondly, how easy is it to make your first $100? Again, I don't think it's very hard at all. I think if you have just an, a reasonable amount of communication skills and a portfolio, some sort of portfolio and some ability to actively reach out to the people that might be hiring you, it's really easy to make your first $100. Again, if you're trying to stick yourself on Fiverr and then kind of compete with 50,000 other people for video editing, it'll be really hard to make your first $100. But if you do it right, if you connect with the appropriate people on Twitter and LinkedIn and email, rather than trying to go on freelance marketplaces, it'll be super, super easy as a video editor to make your first $100. And then how much effort does it take to keep going? Well, unfortunately, quite a lot. Video editing is one of those things that it does take a large amount of time. And as you get better at it and as you develop assets and transitions and templates and stuff, you can get a little bit faster at it, but it is fundamentally a thing that requires work. And so if you really wanted to level up this particular side hustle, you could then form a sort of agency model. You could hire other video editors underneath you, like junior editors who would do the initial cuts and that kind of stuff. And then you could be the person doing the final cut and presenting that to the client. And now you're kind of building your own agency, which is a different sort of way of doing a side hustle, but something we're gonna be talking about in future videos. Now, once you've used all these side hustles to make this extra money, you're probably gonna to wanna to invest said money. And that brings us to the sponsor of this video, which is Trading212. Trading212 is a fantastic app that lets you trade completely for free in terms of stocks and shares and foreign exchange and ETFs. Now, what's great about Trading212 is that they've got a practice mode and a real money mode. The practice mode lets you invest like fake money in the markets. So the markets are actually what's happening in real life, but you're not investing any real money. You're just sort of investing pretend money. So if you're new to the world of investing and you feel it's a little bit daunting to play with real money, then you can absolutely try it out in practice mode. And then once you're ready, it's super easy to deposit money into the account using Apple Pay or using a credit card or using what I use, which is a secure connection to my bank directly. So with one tap, I can just deposit funds into my Trading212 account. And because they allow you to invest in ETFs, exchange traded funds like the S&P 500, it means you don't necessarily even need to pick individual stocks, which is generally something that I usually advocate against. You can just invest in these broad market index funds. And I've got a whole video on exactly how that works if you wanna check it out to learn a bit more. They've also got some pretty cool auto investing features. So if, for example, you don't wanna invest in lump sums, which is generally what I do, you can instead invest a certain amount of money every month or every week, and you can automatically insert that into different pies. So for example, you could have half your portfolio as the S&P 500, and maybe you could have the other half of your portfolio being the Vanguard All World Index Fund. Now, obviously, as with all investments, your capital is at risk. And while your investments can rise, they also might fall. And so depending on when you withdraw money or depending on how you play the markets, as it were, you might well get back less than you invested. But hopefully, if you follow the strategies and generally invest in broad market index funds using an app that's very secure, that's very legit, and that's easy to use, then hopefully, will over time get to a decent result. Also, if you're based in the UK, you can open your ISA with Trading212, the individual savings account, which allows you to invest 20,000 pounds a year completely tax-free in this wrapper. And within the ISA, you can then invest in whatever index funds or ETFs or stocks and shares if you're choosing to do stock picking that you like. Anyway, if you wanna check it out, then all you have to do is download the Trading212 app and you can get that on iOS and also on Android. And they've also got a web app as well. And if you use the coupon code ALI, A-L-I at checkout, that will give you a free share that's worth up to 100 pounds. Side hustle idea number six, become a solopreneur's second pair of hands. All right, so this is quite a fun one. This is not quite a creative skill, but again, generally, if you if you know that there are people out there who you would like to work for, let's say you follow YouTubers or streamers or businesses or whatever, you can send them an email and offer to be their second pair of hands, sort of a cross between an operations manager and a personal assistant. So James Clear, for example, who is the ridiculously best-selling author of Atomic Habits, which you might've read, only has one other person on his team. And this person is his right-hand man who does all of the stuff, sort of like a personal assistant slash virtual assistant slash helping him with all the content he wants to make and like helping him book his like conferences and going through his emails. And for that person working in that role, they get to work with James Clear and that's like a pretty cool place to be. And they get to be basically running the operations of this multi-million dollar business that he's got going on with a small team of two people. And that's pretty fun. It could start off as a part-time side hustle and then it could absolutely become a full-time thing if you're into that kind of stuff. Similarly, you might be familiar with Elizabeth Phillips who used to be my part-time personal assistant for like, you know, a few hours a week. And that was how she got into this world of content creation and stuff. And then by virtue of being my part-time personal assistant for a few hours a week, she realized that, oh, this YouTube stuff is a thing. And she helped out with our YouTuber Academy. And now she's like, you know, massive YouTuber, several hundred thousand subscribers, making loads of money through that. And really doing this sort of personal assistant, operations manager, side hustle, part-time thing can unlock a lot of interesting opportunities further down the line that you just wouldn't even have realized even existed if you hadn't done the thing. Right, so how easy is this to get started? Honestly, I think it's super easy. Again, all you have to do is have the appropriate amount of communication skills to be able to email or DM someone and take on all the risk yourself. The thing that Elizabeth did, which was really good when she initially reached out to me on Instagram was, hey, I'll be, I'll be your part-time PA for a month, personal assistant for a month. You don't even have to pay me and we'll just see if it works out. I ended up being like, no, I'm gonna pay you anyway because I felt bad. But if you can take, if you can demonstrate 
taking on all the risk yourself, it becomes very easy for the person hiring you on the other end to say yes to that without having to think too hard about it. Secondly, how easy is it to make your first $100? Again, pretty easy. Once you've found the right client and you've actually reached out to them and you've gotten your foot in the door and you, you're then demonstrating that you can add value to their stuff, then it's pretty easy to make your first $100. But unfortunately, this is quite a time intensive job. Usually personal assistants and stuff are paid by the hour rather than by outcome. And so you're always kind of tied to a particular hourly return on your time. But hopefully what'll happen is that as you become more and more valuable to the business that you're working with or working for, then they might bring you on as a full-time employee or as someone on a retainer. And now maybe you've even got the option of quitting your day job because this pays better and it's way more fun and gives you way more flexibility. Side hustle idea number seven, one man video production agency. So we've talked about how basically every business is looking to get into video. And we talked about being an editor for short form content on YouTube shorts and Instagram reels and TikTok. But actually relatedly, every business is looking for video, whether it's the local accountant or the local orthodontist or the local plumber, or if it's like a software product or if it's a creator, everyone is looking to make more videos. And so if you can, as a side hustle, be a sort of one man media agency, one man content video production machine, you can offer a really valuable service for businesses. And it's also kind of fun doing that. For example, Gordon, the videographer that we work with used to be a freelance videographer and sort of did this thing for several years where initially he would find clients in the health and fitness space because he was in inherently interested in that. He'd make videos in that space completely for free. And then he started landing paid clients. And then he was being flown to all these like ridiculously cool kind of world championship bodybuilding and powerlifting competitions. And he was doing the video production, the videography, the editing, the storyboarding and everything for these clients. And he turned himself into this one man media powerhouse which has meant that he unlocked tons and tons of opportunities for working with really cool people and traveling around the world and actually doing it with some amount of flexibility and autonomy. You could reach out to software products that you like that maybe don't have compelling videos on their YouTube channel and you could offer to make YouTube videos for that software company. And they'd probably say, hell yes, because software companies have a lot of money and they know that they can land more organic traffic to their product through video. And so if you can become their YouTube channel producer and help make videos about their app, now that's a super easy way of making money as well. And there's tens if not hundreds of thousands of these software companies that have enough money, that have really high margins, that don't do video, that would love to do video, where there's such a huge gap between where they want to be and where they currently are, where all you have to do to bridge that gap is just learn the skill of doing video, learn how a camera works, learn how to take videos with your phone, learn video editing by following my Skillshare class, whatever you like. That's like, video is such a massively underrated service these days where there are so many businesses that want it and there are relatively so few people that can offer that service. Maybe this will change 10 years from now, but right now there's, it's an, we're in an incredible era where there's just so much demand for this thing and not enough supply of it. I know a bunch of people who have, who are making side hustle and also full-time income money as video editors and video producers and videographers. And they keep on getting more and more and more clients to the point where they don't have enough capacity to actually do the work. And they're trying to find other people, but they always say it's really hard to find a good editor. It's really hard to find a videographer who's actually good. How easy is it to get started by being this one man media production agency? Again, not very hard. You can start by filming videos on your phone. You can start by reaching out to local businesses and you can use those as free examples to hone your skills and also get better at the act of kind of selling your services. How easy is it to make your first $100? Again, not that hard because generally if you're targeting a local business and they have money, which almost by definition they do because they are a local business, they will generally see the value of having decent videos on their YouTube channel or on their Instagram page or on their Facebook page or on their website or whatever. But it does take a reasonable amount of time and effort to continue with this sort of thing. But again, you know, if you're interested in if this becomes something that you do over the long term, you can turn it into an agency model if you really want. So those were seven different side hustle ideas. I'm just gonna share what I would personally do if I was in my, let's say early twenties and I was trying to make money. For me, I would go down probably the web designer route because I was always inherently interested in that. I kind of did it when I was young a little bit. I'm, I'm kind of out of date with the latest kind of tools and processes and how to use Webflow and Framer and stuff, but it wouldn't be too hard for me to learn, to teach myself web design, to be able to use these tools. And then I would reach out to all of my favorite creators firstly, and all of my favorite software companies and apps that I use on my phone. And any who don't have a good website, I would say I would offer to make them a website and I'd offer to make the first few pages for free. And then I'd get testimonials and then I'd be using that permissionless apprentice model to then be able to find other people who are willing to pay me for my service. And I'm pretty confident that I'd be able to fairly easily make six figures a year from just doing web design by virtue of finding the right people and by virtue of being good at the skill. All right, so hopefully this video has given you a few ideas on what you can do to make side hustle income online, maybe get to this $1,000 a month point, which could be quite fun. But if you're interested in potentially becoming a digital nomad and making this more of a full-time thing, then you might like to check out this video over here, which is my guide to how to make money online to get to the point where you're making $3,000 a month and you've got fun, freedom and flexibility to be able to do it on your own terms. So, so check out that video if you like. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.